Hello everyone, welcome to Ikira platform and this is Robin Jangir here, your electrical faculty and in this video I am going to talk about the transient over voltages in the DC line. This is the one of the important topic which should be, uh, our, we are actually covering here. So please concentrate on the important points which I have taken for you. Okay, so let's start one by one. So if we talk about the pole to ground faults, if we talk about the pole to ground faults, in the bipolar DC lines, we are having the DC uh, lines as uh, monopolar, bipolar and the homopolar. Uh, I hope you have uh, gone through this. So can result in the transient over voltages. These transient over voltages are kind of uh, uh, your for the short duration of time. And that is in the healthy pole. That is in the healthy pole. Okay. And the magnitude, if I talking about the magnitude of that, that is actually exceeding 2.0 per unit. So that is the uh, that is the value for the transient over voltages. If you're talking about the pole to ground faults. Okay, guys. Now it is saying the maximum over voltage occur at the midpoint in the pole. Okay, so whatever is the pole at the midpoint of that, the maximum value is going to be occur there. And when a fault is also, and when this fault is also the midpoint of other pole. Okay. For the off-center faults, this is not the faults, this is faults. For the off-center faults, the maximum over voltage occurs at the location, which is a mirror image of, which is a mirror image of fault location. If I talking about the off-center, it means for far away from the center where the faults has been occurred, then uh, no, not the fault has been occurred, the uh, center for the operation, the maximum over voltage occurs at the location, which is actually the mirror, uh, mirror image of the fault location. What is actually the fault location? That mirror image will be reflected there. Now, so let us uh, take an example. If the fault occurs at the midpoint of one third distance, we are having, uh, let us suppose, 100 kilometer uh, distance we are having. So if it is operating at the one third, okay, so 33 kilometer if the fault is operating and that is from the sending side, if it is, uh, that is written, that over voltage will occur at the point of one third distance that is only of one third distance from the receiving end. So that will occur. Uh, so it is actually the mirror image. So whatever from the sending end that will be from, uh, from the receiving end and that is one third the one third is a 33.33 kilometer is here so that will be 33.33 kilometer is here on the receiving end now there are the two modes of traveling ways on a bipolar dc line so if we are talking about the bipolar dc line so we are uh, having the two modes of operation of the traveling waves what is the one and two let's talk about that one is your called the pole to pole mode and other is called pole to ground mode that is mode okay so one is having the pole to pole mode so this is our pole to pole mode and this is our pole to ground mode okay so first one is pole to pole mode and this is pole to ground mode it is kind of line to line and the line to ground that is a phase that is immediately after the fault when the fault has occurred that the after the fault has occurred after the some time after the microseconds there will be the two types of operation two types of uh, the modes when the traveling waves are going to be occurred the voltage at other pole rises by the amount delta v what is that delta v we generally like that delta v and if you are talking about the mathematical formula for that so what will be the mathematical formula for that that is delta v is equal to z0 minus z1 upon z0 plus z1 and that is multiplied by v so this is the actually value we have to learn about that so what is actually the z0 what is actually the z1 okay so let's talk about that also so if we are talking about the z0 that is the surge impedance surge 
impedance for the mode to z1 is surge impedance for the mode number 1 and please remember the one relation which i am talking about that is kind of z0 is going to be more if we are comparing with the z1 so z0 is going to be more or you can say the surge impedance in case of the mode number 2 is more as compared to the surge impedance in the mode number 1 so that is the delta v the change in the voltage so how much it will rise okay if this is all occurring so how much due to the traveling wave so what will be the voltage which is going to be rise there okay and that mathematical formula we have to remember now we will discuss uh, some of the waveforms which are uh, written here this is for the inductive this is for the capacitive and here we are talking for your resistive so these are kind of the transient voltage waveforms when they at the midpoint and the terminal for your inductive capacitor so this is the capacitor so this graph is actually showing that is the time duration here the axis is representing the time and here the axis is representing as a voltage value which is given in the per unit so for the three of the cases it is uh, defined there now that is the condition if you are talking about the midpoint in that midpoint it is going to be occur more than your the 1.0 per unit value so that kind of waveform is to be seen there okay now the traveling waves originating at the fault location as the fault has occurred in your system which may be on the converter which may be on the inverter side which may be on the rectifier side so the traveling waves originating at the fault location are going to be traveled in both the directions please remember this and are reflected by the terminals and are reflected by the terminals or you can say the terminal equipments now this kind of termination this kind of termination at the converter station is a inductive comma capacitive comma resistive so there may be a three chances of the termination of that the inductive the capacitive and the resistive and has a bearing on a voltage waveform at the converter and in the line now the typical waveform for the inductive capacitive and resistive terminals which are given here which are actually i have shown you already so this is the waveform how the midpoint uh, if the that is occurring at the midpoint then how it is the variation with the the time and the time is actually in the milliseconds and the voltage is actually in the per unit value now the following conclusions can be drawn from the digital computer study for analysis of these types of traveling waves and the mathematical formula related with the your transient over voltages transient over voltages are actually studied by your the digital computer study okay so according after the study of these uh, parameters or you can say these values we have concluded some of the important points and i have come up with that the first point it is saying the first point it is actually saying with the capacitor of termination to the wavefront as we have already talked about uh, there are the three types of uh, the terminations the capacitive inductive and the resistive so we are going to talk about these all these things so now we are considering the capacitive termination if we are going to talk about the capacitive termination to the wavefront wavefront then the over voltage in the unfolded poles not the unfolded that is unfaulted unfaulted poles is caused by the pole to pole mode this is called the pole to pole mode and the attenuations when it will not at all allow the frequencies to pass through it and the distortion of this mode is actually this light there is very less uh, destructions or the dis uh, distortion will be there so attenuation and the distortion of for this uh, capacitor termination is going to be less there now the surge capacitor okay the surge capacitor does this at the expense of the discipline and it is desirable to use a surge arresters to protect the terminal against the over voltage now we are talking about the inductive termination so what is actually the inductive termination 
if you are talking about the inductive termination through the wave front the over voltages are actually caused by the pole to ground mode okay so with the inductive termination to the wave front so what uh, the wave front having the inductive terminals if there the over voltages are caused by so if there is over voltages they are actually caused by pole to ground mode for which the attenuation is substantial here the uh, attenuation is kind of slight and here the atten attenuation is kind of substantial but the over voltage and the terminal is going to be high there okay now point number four the resistive termination the resistive termination is for the wave front is kind of r equal to z1 that is r equal to z1 and is the best and can be achieved by putting this value in a high pass dc filter okay high pass hpf dc filter okay and not having the surge capacitor so if we are using the uh, resistive termination so there will be a condition arise that r is equal to kind of z1 and what is the z1 that is the surge impedance for the mode number two one second for the mode number this is i have read surge impedance for the mode number one okay now the fault current immediately following a fault is actually limited by the surge impedance and which is a order of 2.0 per unit which is a order of 2.0 per unit the current controller at the rectifier site acting as the limit this current to the pre fault current if the inverter current control is also active okay if you are talking about the inverter current we have seen the rectifier and the inverter control characteristics so inverter current control is also active and uh, the power reversible in the inverter is permitted the inverter current is maintained at the value which differs from the rectified current by the current margin that we have seen in uh, the characteristics graph of the rectifier and the inverter and i have already told a very uh, in a particular manner the current control current extinction angle control alpha all these things i have already discussed there so that i have talked about now if this is happening then this is going to implies that the fault current in the steady state whatever the fault is occurring and the, at the steady state condition is equal to the current margin and that current margin is going to be 0.1 per unit and although this is much less than the current in the ac line faults so this is all about uh, the this lecture thank you so much